Welcome back. We're joined now by Liberal MP, new Liberal MP, Craig Laundy. Welcome to the program. Happy New Year, Peter. And to you. Now, I've got you on to discuss an article that you were quoted in on Sunday, but first up, we've got that Reachtel poll and that information that people aren't feeling very good about the economy. That's got to be worrying uh, for you and other marginal seat MPs because generally, economics is what decides elections, and if people aren't feeling good, then that could put marginal seat holders on the line. Yeah, look, you'd argue, though, in January, everyone's still uh, concentrating. It hasn't been a lot of economic commentary. But I think people are right to be concerned about where we are. We've said that whilst in opposition and moving to uh, to government. We have this year some tough decisions that need to be made. And uh, and I have full confidence, obviously, in Joe Hockey and the financial team that will do that. My job in a marginal seat is to explain to people what they are, why we need them. What do you think needs to be done? I mean, just in, in, in a nutshell, how tough tough does the medicine have to be come the May budget? Mate, I think we need to frame the problem. And I looked at some numbers through the couple of weeks off. As of December 31st, we have around 23.2 million people in Australia and we have 11.6 million people working. That is 11.6 million people paying into the system, 23.2 million drawing on it at some th phase through their life. That's what a structural budget deficit is. People in But the Joseph unemployment rate is slated to go up. So. Yeah, and I believe it will. And that means the problem gets worse. That means it, we need to look at every sector, and that's the idea behind the Commission of Audit. We need to look sector by sector. The, so the will, you be, problem, will you be frank if the government squibs it on the Commission of Audit, the, the recommendations are handed down by Tony Shepherd. they're the tough medicine that I suspect that someone ideologically like you would support. If Joe Hockey and the, and the Treasury team squib it, are you going to come out and call them on it? I don't believe they will squib it, but I also believe, I come from a background that's not political, that if tough decisions are required, they need to be made, but you've got to take people on a journey. So if, if we walk away, and I don't think we will, our country's at a crossroads, we were elected telling people we were at a crossroads and that tough decisions, we haven't changed the language, I would be very disappointed, and so would most of my backbench colleagues, if we didn't do what needs to put it Otherwise, we're just shipping it out to our kids, and we can't do that. All right, you mentioned the background you came from. Let me use that as a segue into a story that was in the Sunday Herald over the weekend, on Sunday, unsurprisingly. Uh, you come from a, from a publican background. Um, I call it a medium-sized business. It's hardly a small business. You're a pretty successful publican background. Now, you weighed in on some of this uh, violence on our streets and discussion about uh, about law adjustments with, with the caveat of, of you know being quite open about your background and the experience that gives you. Now, you want uh, drug testing outside side pubs. What's that all about? No, look, if you read the, the body of the article, and to go back a minute, I was chased right through January, surprise, surprise, for my opinion. Uh, on licensing issues. I come from a licensing background. This is a state jurisdiction and I stayed right out of it because the last thing I What happened? To... Did the person hide their number? 1831 on your mobile phone for anyone that wants to <laughs> hide the number? I, I just, I thought it was better. I didn't want to buy into it. It was Premier O'Farrell and his government's decisions and, and they, I have full confidence in them as well. But come the decisions that were made last week, that was a raft of changes. Uh, the Sun Herald contacted me on Friday and asked my opinion and if we are, and, and this is as a father of teenage kids, we are right to have a discussion about where society is and what it looks like in the future and we are right to have a discussion about what role alcohol plays in that but we shouldn't just put the blinkers on and focus on alcohol. There so you, you think it's mostly about ice? I mean, some of the quotes in the article were quite interesting. Your point when you were sort of working in these, in, in some of the pubs that, that you own, you were making the point that you could just tell, uh, I think were your rough words, you that, that, that someone's on ice. What, what can you tell? Mate, you can tell a variety. Ice is the worst of them. I've, I've had the misfortune of seeing them all, and, and I have from 19, 20 Why is years it the worst? Because it makes people aggressive. Yes, it, it does a few things. You can tell from dilated pupils, you can tell from excessive sweating. They're also, in a licensed environment, extremely dry mouth and thirsty, but you can't tell that because they're drinking. It, but it also, it, it hits, whether it's adrenaline, and get an expert on here and talk about it, but it makes people feel like they can run through brick walls. And I can tell you that 75 kilo blokes ringing wet have been, I have had to, you know, to say no more time to go. And I know, I, well, I strongly suspect what they're on. I won't go near them, I'll wait for the police. And 
they'll take on anyone. But here's the question: you, you're one of part of your, I mean, your suggestion, I suppose, was this whole idea of the drug testing. But uh, some legal experts were raising doubts about whether or not uh, how admissible that might be because of the Involve difficulties the attached to it. Involve them in the process. So your so point is, you want to see a process. Abs I want to see a discussion first. I mean, at the moment we're having this blanket, and I challenge journalists. Okay, I, I strongly believe coming one generation through university ago, and my parents before me, everyone experimented at university and then people move on. What I've seen amongst my friends is people haven't moved on. What drugs are used for in our society is to increase the length you can stay out at night. It straightens the ship so that when you drink an excessive amount, you take the drug so you can continue to oh, stay we're, out. We're right out of time, but I've got to say this. The O'Farrell rule changes would suggest to me that people are going to be more likely, not less likely, to take drugs because if drinks are being uh, ending early and lockouts are occurring and so forth, that's going to lead people to an alternative to alcohol. But that's why they're drugs. proposing drug testing, which is your first step. Right. It involves the legal people, saliva testing, and then and ultimately blood testing, work out what the bur burden of proof is so that it survives the process, but have the discussion is what I'm saying. All right, well, I bet we're going to have that discussion in and the months so, and, and, and years to come. And I challenge journalists to think of their own background and, and when they last saw illicit drugs. Yep. Thanks, Craig. Well, we're okay. right out of time. We appreciate you being there. Thanks, Thanks for joining Peter. us. Cheers, mate.